Wait, 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 wait. Head of trade at the what now? You mean to tell me Little Miss Nobody Believed in Me has the head of trade for the Serbian Danish embassy on her team, on her website, just out here like this in the open? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. How are you doing on this fine, whatever the day of the week it is? So today I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about Aura and who the people are who have been historically involved in Aura since its very recent inception in 2019. So I'm gonna show y'all a clip from Soft White Underbelly, Mark Leita's channel, from a video that can still be found on Mark's channel from September 25th, 2020, okay? So for those keeping track of the timeline, Amanda Rabb was put into court-ordered treatment about July or August 2020, somewhere around that time. So the next month, September 2020, we have Lima appearing on Mark's channel, not once, but twice. Now the clip you're about to see is from the September 25th, 2020 appearance. I don't know when they recorded this, but I assume that they published it pretty close in time to when it was recorded. So I'm just, I'm just assuming based on the date of publication that this was recorded also contemporaneously. Amanda was put into court ordered treatment under Lima's care. Lima worked hand in hand with Amanda's father in order to put Amanda into Lima's care. And also they had a lot of help from Mark Leta behind the channel soft white underbelly he has millions of subscribers and it's really the channel that gave lima her first platform so the clip that you're about to see is of lima discussing with mark Leta some of the pushback or backlash that she had been receiving based on her appearance on soft white underbelly i just for timeline purposes i did not find out that lima yuremovich existed until february 2022 so this, what you're about to see is a good year and a half before I ever even knew the woman existed. So this is about a two minute long clip. Sentiment towards what you're doing is incredibly positive, yeah. but there are some people that like to cause problems and, and, and the death threats that I've seen for me and for a lot of the people I interview, yeah. it's so disturbing. I mean, it's like, I want to just turn off the comments yeah. permanently on my channel. Well, my I just need to reiterate. This is September, 2020 at the latest possible moment that Lima said these statements it was september 25th 2020 i didn't find out this woman existed until february 2022 so it's like a year and a half later okay so instagram messages I, I originally um told everybody that if they want to get a copy of the lps conservatorship templates to message me on instagram because i wouldn't I, my clients email me so i would never get back to people um, and so my Instagram messages have been flooded with threats and um, trying to find my sisters, trying to find my husband and trying to share my address publicly. And so those things are really scary when you're going out of your way. I'm not the best on film. I know that there's a lot of things that I need to work on because my job is actually behind a computer or in a treatment center. And so these are not things that I'm like prepped and poised on. But when it comes to no me being on camera and putting myself out there and then my family getting the repercussions or I've had to take down my team page on my website because some of my team members were getting attacks. And so um, to know that so many people are taking so many risks to work with me and help build my vision and then those people get splattered on because of something that I chose to do, which is to publicly. What in the hell? splattered on what's she talking about those people get splattered on you know go out there and yeah. try to be a part of this no it's, it's sad that social media does this and it's, yeah it's... again y'all this they ain't talking about me i didn't even know this youtube channel existed i didn't even know lima yuvramovich existed she's trying to have everybody believe I i'm the reason behind all of the people's uh distrust and perhaps disdain for her that that couldn't be further from the truth Look, she's telling you right here, right now, she had to remove the team page from her website and people were getting splattered on. I mean, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound like a good thing. I can promise you that. Let's finish up this clip and we're going to head down to the archive.com and see what the Wayback Machine has to say about this deleted team tab. <laughs> 
it's not you because it's I've seen it many in many cases on my channel and it's it's sad but, <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people are very disturbed out there I okay I agree a lot of people are very disturbed out there Mark with that we can agree I'm not even going to tell y'all with my own words any conclusions okay I'm going to show you how you can do an investigation if all of us can know how to do this and we have these skill sets and they're all free, at least the ones today. Okay, so let me pull up the internet. Go to your search engine of choice. What you're gonna wanna go to is the website called wayback.archive.org, pulling up that looks like this. Now I happen to know that the URL is meetara.io. But if you didn't know that, then you would just go to the website you wanted to archive or that you wanted to look at the archives for and you would copy it. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the Aura website. It's not showing on the StreamYard thing here. I guess it's a setting that they have on. Um, but up at the top, you know, where you type in your URL, you type in your whatever, whatever dot com dot org dot whatever. You just go up there and you're going to copy the whole thing. And then you go to the Wayback Machine and you will paste. So this is what it looks like when you copy it from the URL. But you could also have just typed in meetara.io. Then you just press enter. And what it shows you here, like 2019, for example, you see these two little sticks. Each one of those bars is one instance, at least one instance, sometimes it could be more than one, of someone coming to to this website and saving or archiving the website as it looks on that exact day. And conceivably, you could do that every single day. So that what you get is, even though today, Aura looks a certain way, this is the front page of Aura today. Looks nice, looks very good. So look, on the Wayback Machine, you can go and click 2019, for example and scroll down the calendar and see if there's any, it looks as though the first time someone came into the Wayback Machine and manually archived Aura's website was May 11th, 2019. So what you'll do is you hover over that, you scroll down to this link right here. If there were multiple instances on the same date of someone doing this, you would have multiple bullet points, but this is just one instance. So I clicked on it and it's going to take me to what the Aura website used to look like as of May 11, 2019. Unfortunately, my little scale of justice up there is kind of covering up the date, but you can do this yourself. It's a free website. You can go look it up yourself. What it says is May 11th, 2019. And this is what Aura's website looked like on May 11th, 2019. And it was basically a snapshot of the website from 2019. Okay, so the interesting date that I really want y'all to look at is actually from 2020. So I'm gonna pull that up now. So just to gather our thoughts, if you recall, Lima on the video I just showed to y'all in September, 2020, she said she had already had to take down the team part of her website. I'll insert the clip of what she said right here. The repercussions are I've had to take down my team page on my website because some of my team members were getting attacks. And so um, to know that so many people are taking so many risks to work with me and help build my vision. And then those people get splattered on because of something that I chose to do, which is to publicly, you know, go out there and try to be a part of this. According to Lima, she had taken down the team member part of the website. But fortunately, somebody had the good sense to take a snapshot right around that time, about a month earlier, on August 9th, 2020. As you can see here, there's this little link. So when we click on it, it's gonna bring us to a similar looking page, but this time, as you can see, these tabs at the top are different. What I wanna definitely look into is this team tab. So I'm gonna click on it, and this is what pulls up. So I have resized the screen, at least temporarily, so that y'all can see what the top of the page looks like. So see, it says meetara.io. There's been 18 different captures of this website by, you know, 18 different instances. And some of them were people who were on the scene way before us, clearly because there's stuff from 2019, 2020, and 2021. And clearly I didn't even know about this then. So people were already taking pictures of the R website. I've clicked on the team tab. I'm gonna make the page bigger again, but I w just wanted y'all to see that this is how the website works here up at the top. So you can see the date that this was captured 
was August 9th, 2020. And this is the webarchive.org. I've used this for my Brittany research as well. I'm definitely going to be doing investigations on all of the members of this board. Some of them are going to look very familiar to you and some of them will be new characters that we're gonna have to start looking into a little bit more. Now, I have to make an obligatory disclaimer because if I do not, then I end up getting blamed for stuff that I did not tell y'all to do. And so I have to make this disclaimer. I think we can all agree that Lima has been less than completely forthcoming in the past. And some might go so far as to say that she's actually lied in the past. But I must put it out there. If she was telling the truth way back then in 2020, before I even knew that any of this shit was going on, people were attacking her team. That should not have been happening. No one should be getting attacked. Okay. So no one should take or misconstrue this investigation that I'm doing as an attack. And I would never, ever encourage anyone to attack anyone. But I digress. Okay. So let's get back to this. Okay. So here's the team page and it says right here, meet the team. Who we got first? First on deck, of course, CEO Lima Yavrimovich. Second up, CTO, that is the chief technological or chief technology officer. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce. So we have this fella, Nanad Jerenkic, Nanad J we'll say. And it says full stack developer and creative technologist, former executive at a blockchain startup, taking company tech from zero to 50 million in revenues. Okay, cool. Then after Nanad, we have Melissa McCarthy. And I don't think it's the same Melissa McCarthy, who's a famous actress. Just based on the pictures, I don't think they're the same person. But they do have the same name. Okay, so what do we have here? Melissa McCarthy, COO. That is like chief operations officer. So, I mean, usually in my very limited layperson experience, a chief operating officer is a pretty important role in a company's uh, runnings. They are, they are literally listen to the title, chief operating and sometimes operations officers. So they're in charge of the operations. Now, I, I must say, I have no idea if Melissa McCarthy, COO, as of August 2020, is still in any way related to our as business practices today. No clue. She could have quit. She could have got fired. She could have anything could have happened. I really don't know. All I'm showing you here is who was on the Meet the Team website, according to the Wayback Machine, as of August 9th, 2020, two years ago. Anything could happen in these two years. What does it say is her bio? Experienced healthcare business development and sales specialist. Okay. Experienced healthcare business development. So she's a She's a business lady. Remember, this is a mental health startup. This is a company that's touting itself as a mental health startup. So this is the top row. This is what they chose to put as the top row of the company. None of them are medical professionals. They're business people. They're technology people. Lima is listed as a mixed reality experience designer. Seven years of building mental health care technology and data mining. Okay, that's interesting. But I'm I'm kind of looking for like a doctor, a therapist, a psychiatrist. That I mean, if I'm going to invest my money in this company, which I don't have no money, but if I was going to invest money, I would be looking at what these people, I'm calling them the board. I don't really know who's on the board. This is what they're calling the team. So if I say the board at any point during this video, it's I mean this this website, right? I don't really know who's actually on the board. It could be these people, it could be different people, but I may slip up and say the board. So on the team website, we have Melissa McCarthy. And what else do they say she's doing other than an experienced healthcare business development sales specialist? Former executive at Acadia. Okay, I don't know what Acadia is and American Addiction Centers, AAC. Is that ringing a bell to y'all? Let me pull up a website real quick and see if it rings a bell to you. So now we're on the website for the Desert Hope Treatment Center. This is the center in Las Vegas, Nevada, where Amanda Rabb tragically lost her life in Clark County. Just you tell me what it says right there up above Desert Hope Treatment Center. What's it say? Y'all, can you read that? Yeah, if, you, if you're reading that it says American Addiction Centers, that's also what I'm reading that it says. 
So this is the place where Amanda Rabb tragically passed away. Amanda went to Desert Hope Treatment Center, an American Addiction Center's facility. So I have all that running through my memory banks. And then, you know, imagine my surprise, of course, whenever I see that the chief operating officer as of August 2020 on the Wayback Machines picture of this website was a former executive at the American Addiction Centers. Is it possible that Melissa McCarthy had a little bit of a conflict of interest in serving as an executive for American Addiction Centers and being on the board of Aura? which was at least tangentially related to a fundraiser that was giving money for Amanda's treatment, which presumably would go back into an American addiction center, unless the treatment at Desert Hope was completely free. But this is just me thinking out loud. This is just me thinking out loud. Let's say Melissa McCarthy and in her infinite kindness and in her infinite ability to create connections was able to get Amanda Rabb free or very cheap treatment at Desert Hope. Don't you think Lima at that point, if that was the case, would have had a responsibility to then go back to Mark's viewers and say, hey, look, I told y'all this shit was going to cost $250,000. We have now gotten a discount or free treatment thanks to someone on our board, thanks to someone on our team. You know, these are just questions that run through my mind. I don't know. But what do y'all think about the fact that Melissa McCarthy at the same time as working as COO, or at least being listed as such, according to the Wayback Machine. What, do you think there's anything weird about that? Do you think that that's something that should have been disclosed maybe to the soft white underbelly crowd? Do you think it's just, no, it's just a total coincidence? Like, I, I mean, I can't imagine that it would be, but this isn't, this isn't even the main event of what I wanted to show y'all today. We have an, more people here listed on the board. Of course, we're gonna have Ivan Yevremovich, who is listed as the CFO, that's the chief financial officer. Let me make it bigger for y'all. And his little bio says, investment manager with 16 years of advisory experience, strategic investment management and financial planning. Okay, so we are familiar with Ivan at least a little bit. We will be getting a lot more into his background and his publicly available information as the days and weeks go on. Um, but look, you see it here, he's listed as the CFO, the chief financial officer, that's the guy in charge of the money for Aura. So, I mean, that's what it says. That's what it says on this website. That's what it says. I'm just telling y'all what it says. But again, not listing here that he is a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a counselor, a social worker. I'm still, if I'm just an investor, I'm going to want to see people on this team who know what they're doing with the patients. You know what I mean? Not just some executive at American Addiction Centers. You know what I mean? Next person, Alexander Milas. He's the vice president of engineering. So who's the president of engineering? I don't know. It's not listed here. we got the vice president of engineering listed here. Experienced full stack developer. So the other guy is a full stack developer too. Nanad. Specializing in mobile and virtual reality game design. Background leading and managing large teams. Okay, Alexander. Then we have someone with doctor in front of their name. Though that's promising. Tamara Milivojevic. Milivojevic. Mil sorry. Dr. Tamara. Sorry. Uh, then it says clinical director. So what are her credentials? Is she a psychiatrist? Is she a psychologist? Does she work directly with patients? Let's read her bio and find out. PhD and multidisciplinary biologist. Hmm. Scientific background alternative therapies. What does that mean? Nanotoxicology and clinical trials. Hmm? What, what do you make of this? Clinical director. She's the clinical director. She's the clinical director. So what I'm looking for as a either consumer or a user of Aura who might want to maybe try it out myself or as an investor in Aura as a company, what I would be personally, just me, just me looking for, would be the clinical director to have some clinical experience with substance abuse treatment patients or perhaps PTSD patient, trauma-informed therapy, something like something to make me feel comfortable with the fact that this is the clinical director. And she does have a PhD uh, in something. 
a multi multidisciplinary biologist. So biologist, I mean, that's cool. Like, you know, a lot more about science than me, most likely Dr. Tamara. Um, but, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of missing like what this means, like scientific background, alternative therapies. What does that mean? It, it kind of sounds like she might have some type of background in alternative treatments or therapies in a clinical setting, but it doesn't give any specifics. It doesn't give any details. It's just kind of like words put together that you're kind of left to just piece together. What does it mean? PhD in what? I mean, she could have a PhD in astronomy. Okay, I looked it up and she does have a PhD in biotechnology, which seems on point and appropriate for her position at Aura, at least from an education standpoint. I don't know about her experience, but from an education standpoint, biotechnology PhD seems pretty legitimate in these circumstances, if you're asking my non-medical, non-legal layperson opinion. She's also a multidisciplinary biologist. There's this weird string of words that says scientific background alternative therapies and then a comma, nanotoxicology, and then a comma, and clinical trials. Well, that's very interesting. All right, so y'all already know about Albert Monero Jr. We've talked about him many times on this channel before. He's listed as the program director and the chief happiness officer. Hold on, I'm going to make a bigger deal. The program director and the chief happiness officer. Whatever in the hell that means, I do not know. Project manager experience in developing architecture for clients and alignment with business plans and organizing collaborative approaches with client. Like, again, I mean, that could mean anything, but I'm not going to waste too much time on him. Saving the best for last. We got another Nanad, Nanad Mitosevich, and he is uh, listed as the director of corporate strategy. And would you just read along with me of what his little bio says right here? Head of trade at the Belgrade Danish Embassy. Business develop and growth strategist. 20 years experience in emerging markets. Wait, 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 wait. Head of trade at the what now? You mean to tell me little miss nobody believed in me? Has the head of trade for the Serbian Danish Embassy? on her team, on her website, just out here like this in the open. I was actually very, very surprised to see this person listed here. It's just very shocking to me that he would be the head of trade at the Belgrade Danish Embassy. So let's just look him up together. This is investigation. We, we haven't reached any conclusions at all whatsoever, other than this is just what we're looking at. We don't know what it is, where, who did the website. I don't really know. I always like to double confirm things. So let's just look this guy's name up and see if we can confirm that he actually was in that position at that job, at that place. It is an embassy for Denmark inside of Serbia. So now we're on a website called serbian.um.dk and the trade council, trade council in Serbia contact information. As you can see up here in the top left, it says Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Denmark, Denmark and Serbia. And then you see the tabs up here, Denmark and Serbia, the trade council, trade council in Serbia contact information. The trade council is always ready to assist you. Head of commercial section, Nenad Matosevic, nenmit at um.dk. So this guy, Mr. Head of Trade, Denmark and Serbia, is also on another team with some familiar faces. Let's see if we see any familiar faces here. Okay, Giselle, Sasha. We'll get into this guy a lot more later. I have a whole, I think we're going to do a whole BJ Investigates on the, just this guy alone. Let's see if we see any familiar faces here or if they've been deleted. So we have Mr. Nanad here. Oh, look, mm, look who's here. She looked familiar to anybody? We the incubator. So we have Lima being listed as, as Lima Mora now. Different name. She never really explained that one. She never really said why. She went from maiden name to Mora, then took the Mora away, then back to maiden name hyphen Yevremovich. Never explained that, but you know, whatever. Look what she's listed as here. As a mixed reality expert specializing in cinematic virtual reality experience design and stereoscopy with a focus on immersive educational content and concept development. Well, where does it say anything about substance abuse? or anything like that you know what I mean it says something about a second chance I don't really want to get uh too lost in the Lima sauce here 
because what I want you to look at on um, who is Julia, they couldn't even ask the poor girl her last name, is that Mr. International Business Development and Public Affairs Professional Nanad Matosevich is also on the board with Lima here. So I'm just adding all these different clues up and just showing y'all what I'm finding, right? The We the Incubator will definitely do. What does it say here that he, that he, let's read his bio and then I'll wrap it up and I'll leave y'all to go do your own investigating. He's listed here as a financial advisor. Now remember, the same man is listed on serbian.us MDK in the trade council, all that head of commercial section, Nanad Matosevich. Now he's also listed not only as the head of trade at the Danish in embassy as of 2020, the Danish embassy in Serbia, but he's also listed on this other website as a financial advisor. Now I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but I can imagine some conflicts of interest arising. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully Serbia has some good anti-corruption measures in place and there's a lot of transparency and there's a lot of whatever, but I really don't know. I do not know but I'm seeing him listed now as a financial advisor. International business development and public affairs professional. Okay, that's new. A uh, consultant and leader of small teams with a proven track record of helping foreign companies successfully develop. A proven track record of helping foreign companies successfully develop business on new markets. Successful in facilitating and executing M&A, that means mergers and acquisitions, Greenfield and Brownfield Investments Internationally, hands-on experience in using communications and public affairs activities to reach commercial goals, hands-on experience in using communications and public affairs activities to reach commercial goals experienced in complex stakeholder management of both public and private sectors on all levels, including C-level executives and high-ranking government officials, experienced in complex stakeholder management of public and private sectors, including high-ranking government officials, y'all. Little Miss couldn't get her company off the ground, has the director of corporate strategy, who's the head of trade at the Danish embassy in Serbia. He's a financial advisor, and he has experience in complex stakeholder management involving high-ranking government officials. Some shit ain't adding up, but I don't know. Trained and well-versed in handling confidential information and maintaining a high level of integrity. Maybe, I don't know. Cross-disciplinary experience in various industries, but with a strong focus on energy and renewables. Okay, what in the hell on God green earth does energy and renewables have to do with this company that at this time is saying that it is a data-driven solution for mental health and behavioral health. Mixed reality as a complementary treatment to talk therapy and pharmaceutical treatment with transferable lessons. Okay, that's what they're saying their company is. And their director of corporate strategy is in the energy and renewables industry. Like, why are none of these people mental health professionals? Like, with licenses and stuff. Like, why? And, and why... Is, is Lima or Ivan or whoever close enough with whoever to be able to get someone on the team, on the website, on the team, who works in an embassy and who has experience with complex stakeholder management, including government, high-ranking government. Who are these people? Who are these people? Because I promise y'all, I don't know any heads of trade at any embassies in this whole world. I don't. Do you? Worked as a consultant in a financial target-based environment in government institutions? What does that even mean? Worked as a consultant in financial target-based environment in government institutions. Direct business ownership experience. On-call financial consultants for various international financial institutions? experienced in foreign trade financing. Okay, I will say I'm very impressed with the man's resume, but I just don't understand how literally any of this stuff fits in to the stated purpose of Aura, which is at this time driven by the same mission 
Our team of tech leads and clinical experts are dedicated to revolutionize mental health care solutions and ensuring access to high quality treatment options for all. That's their stated mission, this team. Tech leads and clinical experts. Well, this don't look like a tech lead or a clinical expert. This don't look like a tech lead or a clinical expert and neither does this. It says he is an on-call consultant for international financial institutions. It says he worked as a consultant in a financial target-based environment in government institutions. What does that mean? I could go on and on and on. I have found so much stuff on these people. I mean, I could do a whole entire video on each one of these people, but I really wanted to just show y'all like what level that we're working at here. She's hired a dean of a law school to represent her in this defamation case against me. The dean of a law school they have roped into this. Adam 22's dad was pardoned by Bill Clinton. Adam 22 let Lima come on the show, would not let me. And now we see that some former executive of American Addiction Centers was on Lima's team when Amanda Rabb got put into an American Addiction Center. I have questions about that. And now we're seeing that the at least former, but maybe even current head of trade at the Danish embassy in Serbia was also on the ARA team, along with Ivan Yevrimovich. So I don't know who actually like owns ARA. I can only tell you what I saw on this website, which you are able to go and look up your own self as well. And to me, as usual, it has raised way more questions than provided answers. And if anything, it's confirming more and more to me that there is a lot more going on here than just some little girl starting a little business, okay? This ain't some little girl starting a little business. This shit is top tier. These people are in the industry for decades, combined experience, like probably over a hundred years these people have. So I'm not buying that whole thing about, oh, I didn't know I was gonna fund it and the investors and then I ain't buying none of that shit. I'm just not. Facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.